Hey, my name is Zero from WUSC FM and H2 on Columbia. I am here with a very special guest, Boston-based bass music producer and DJ, formerly known as Space Geisha, now going by Vale. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Um, so tell me what you think the people need to know about who you are and what you do. So yeah, I got into music uh, just about 10 years ago, and I started off running a record label that I still run today called Street Ritual. I was the label manager. And, um, you know, prior to that in college and high school and things, I was always like DJing the dances or making playlists for my friends. So musical selection has always been something I've, I've loved ever since I was a little girl. Um, and then throughout the label, it just gave me a lot more opportunity to find kind of those diamonds in the rough, those underground sounds that I was really, you know, feeling and getting to put them, you know, on a on a national platform um you know over the years we've continued to grow we've had a lot of artists come you know kind of come up along with us and um it just there was a point where i said to myself you know i'm i'm watching all these artists i represent djing all these songs and you know i, I think i could do this better <laughs> i really do so i decided to give it a whirl and um next thing you know it you know, quickly became one of my biggest passions. Um, I've been DJing for eight years now and I've been producing casually for about four. Um, I just, you know, got to the point where I was able to kind of finish tracks and stuff uh, earlier this year. So I'm really new in the, in the original music production realm, but um, you know, being a DJ for so long and a label manager and now a producer, you know, all those things go hand in hand. So um, to say that music is is my life is probably an understatement at this point. That's awesome. And uh, if you had to describe your sound to somebody who's never heard it, you know, what would you say? How would you describe it? You know, I have to do this a lot when I'm talking to family members and you know, random people on the street and stuff. And right. the way I try to let them connect with it is it's electronic music um, with kind of a, a psychedelic flair at times, very heavy bass lines. Um, you know, I think bass music in general is is to experience it live is unlike anything. I mean, for me, unlike anything else in the world. And I think that trying to explain that to someone that, you know, we build sound systems that are 10 feet tall just to resonate those sub bass frequencies. And that that's what bass music is really about. So it's you know, it's kind of hard to get into that level of it. But I try to just simplify that by saying, you know, really heavy bass lines. You know, I don't, I, I lean more towards the darker, more elusive, um, haunting side of the bass spectrum. A lot of F minor songs and notes and things like that. Um, so, you know, sometimes I'll say some scary bass, um, but it has influences, honestly, from all over the, the electronic music spectrum, including dubstep, drum and bass, halftime. Um, I grew up on hip hop, you know, it's all si sorts of psychedelic bass music. Um, so it's, it's got a little bit of everything. Yeah. And I mean, I, I totally get that. It's, it's almost impossible to try and describe this type of music when somebody hasn't surrounded themselves in the environments. Cause I feel like that's where it thrives. Like at shows and festivals with these sound systems. Yeah. When people, um, I like to say when people already have their robot ears on, they, <laughs> they can understand it a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Um, and sometimes, you know, I'll have a friend like, you know, my mom's friend or something who wants to hear a song and. I'll kind of pull it up on my phone and when you try to show anybody's song you know on a phone in our world it's just not the same so i really urge people to ho oh, check this out in your car or check this out at your home speaker right so that they're not um limiting themselves from actually experiencing the bass which is what it's all about yeah right actually exactly um you've gone through a huge change recently um changing your name or moniker to veil um and I wanted to ask if you want this to be a complete like overhaul to your project, like new sound, new name, new everything, or are you just going for a name change and then kind of continuing what you did before? I think it's a combination of both. I, you know, as I, as I mentioned earlier, I've been DJing for just over eight years now. And, you know, any human can tell you that in eight, eight to 10 years time, you go through large uh, evolutions within yourself, large transitions. Um, so I had been, I've actually been feeling for probably just, just over a year that, um, I was, I don't, I don't think outgrowing the name is exactly the right term, but I was 
feeling um, almost limited by it, if that if that's a good word. And I, you know, I feel very strongly about racial justice, social justice, all the um, kind of things that have come up in 2020, um, you know, stronger than ever. And I, I, you know, I did a lot of work on my end and the, the main thesis I kind of came up with was that as, as a white person, I, I don't, I can't really decide if it's offensive or not. Um, everybody, you know, I've talked with thousands of people about this and everybody kind of has their own opinions. And, you know, in my gut, in my heart, I just wanted to represent my art in a, you know, moving forward in a slightly more mature and sophisticated way, um, which will definitely reflect my life. You know, when I started as Space Geisha eight years ago, I was spending two, three weeks at Burning Man, throwing stages, you know, on festival tour all summer. You know, my life was a lot different than now I'm, I'm in my studio. I'd prefer to be in my studio over almost anywhere else and spending a lot more time, you know, writing music and stuff. So the the name change, it felt like very in line with the evolution I was experiencing personally. Um, also, you know, I, I wanted to represent my original productions kind of under a new light because I think the Space Geisha project was such a gem and, and so unique and fun uh, for so many years as a DJ project. But I wanted to kind of set, the, um, set a new tone moving forward. Um, now that I'll be releasing a lot more of my originals and um, yeah, so to kind of circle back and finish your question there, you know, the selection process for a lot of my DJ mixes and things like I'm pulling a lot of the same energies and strategies and styles that I was using through Space Geisha, but I feel like my limit and my ceiling of, you know, maybe what people expect or what I expect of myself has been lifted, which creatively is is a really good feeling. So, yeah, I just I think reinvention and and accepting, you know, kind of new realities is a good theme to go with this year. And this was just, an, a, you know, another thing in my life that, you know, made sense for me as I as I grow and evolve. Yeah, and I love that idea of, of just this audio maturity. Like, I feel like people are going to realize, like, as as your project has changed and like as you've had more and more years of experience, that it's just going to become something different over time, anyways. Even if you know your process may stay in the same. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely. I'm going to be going a little harder and a little darker <laughs> than usual. <Yeah. laughs> some people would say, like, is that possible? With <laughs> once they heard Space Geisha, but trust me, it is. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to shine a little bit more of, um, you know, my my talents through my releases um, as opposed to, you know, a, a DJ mix, which is mostly sharing other people's talents um, through through my talent, but of DJing. But yeah, it's, it's just very exciting. Um, and it's been an amazing process. I've learned a lot. It's, it was really, really, really hard at times. You know, I questioned myself every day, but I just stuck with my gut and decided to take a big risk and um you know what i found in life i'm 33 years old is that most of the time when you take risks um you know it it pays off so it is it is space geisha not geisha yeah yeah sorry i meant to to tell you it's space geisha yeah, I, I am the worst with pronouncing names i have just been on a hot streak of getting them all wrong so oh it's I fine apologize. I don't and, need any disrespect. no it's all good you and every dj that's literally ever opened up for me so okay yeah because i was gonna say that's where i've heard it and i figured people would have it right if they're if they're opening up or or hosting you somewhere so like i i don't know no that's you'd be surprised though. And I guess aside from the maturity and, and all the growth in, in your project, is there any other reason why you chose the name Veil? Well, okay. The the process for developing a new brand was very long and very arduous. I want to give a shout out to my best friends and my manager who probably heard from me 15 times a day for a few months straight with, you know, throwing ideas and, and inspirations around. Um for me, it wasn't as simple as just, okay, here's a name and let's move forward. It, right. it was a lot deeper than that. It was, you know, Space Geisha, the name had a lot of intention. It, you know, Geishas are traditionally, you know, masters of art and hospitality and culture and, you know, sharing art and languages and all these things. So um, that's kind of how I got my name at Burning Man was, 
was many years ago, my friends, you know, people at my camp, different musicians playing at my stage saying, oh, you've taken such good care of us. You're always around, you know, you're always providing everyone with everything they need. You're like a little space geisha. Um, so it, you know, there was always a lot of intention behind that. And I wanted the new project to also to represent me, my story and my intentions as well. It wasn't as easy as just pulling a name out of the sky. Right. Yeah. Um, so I worked with my a lot with my art, uh, my artist who does you know all my merch, all my artwork, all you know my videos, everything. His name's Five Nine, and we had a lot of brainstorming sessions. And um, it, you know the the name Vale came about because I'm kind of a late night creature, and I've spent a lot of most of the time where I'm writing beats or working on music is going to be two, three, four a.m. It's also my favorite time to DJ. Um, I just think it's a really haunting hour of the night and the realities of, you know, daylight and the real world are typically far, very far from us around that time of night. Um, you know, you've, you've been there at a festival, you roll up, it's 8 p.m., you loving the set, but you're still worrying about where your car's parked or if your tent's getting rained on or what, but... Typically by 2, 3, 4 a.m. you've kind of dialed in and loosened up and really reached that state of immersion. So um, also uh, with the kind of late at night energies I was getting, um, you know, I, I, I'm a spiritual person. I believe in no concrete thing, but I believe there are many other worlds and realms and um, things out there that, you know, humans don't know about. And so to me like the veil between you know this world and whether it be an, an other world of spirits whether it be you know a parallel universe of all of us there whether it be an other world in relation to you know what we're experiencing now humanity in regards to um, this pandemic and all you know collectively experiencing this new world together so i think that the veil between all those worlds and our world is like continuing to get thinner and so it was just this really cool idea for me um you know really strong feeling rather of this name being able to kind of tell the story i wanted around these topics around other civilizations other species um equality around you know embracing darkness because i think that you know as humans we have lightness and we have darkness it's very important to embrace both so yeah and i i really resonated with the fact that it was short and punchy as well like um coming from a name that was very long and clunky and often mispronounced it um, once I, you know, had kind of started thinking about it, I just fell in love with its its simplicity and its kind of maturity. And yeah, I just feel like it, it can have a lot of different meanings. Um, I also lastly want to point out that I wanted to, it was very important to me that my rebrand remained feminine because, you know, we need that feminine energy in the music industry nowadays. Absolutely. And yeah. I had a few other working ideas that were more or less you know genderless and you couldn't really tell one way or the other and you know i i'm so proud to be a woman i'm so proud to be a woman and especially today's music industry so i really felt almost the responsibility that i needed to to rep that um and i'll tell you that when i decided on veil vale, i had a couple members of my team i had a couple of my friends um, tell me initially they didn't like it and it was the first time in many 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 months that I said to them wow I don't care if you don't like it I, I love it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah. that to me was when I, I knew it was the right name and I'll tell you now all of those friends and <laughs> members of my team have been like gotta say you were right it is sick because it's not just a name it you know, once we we kind once I kind of knew the name, then you have to start thinking of the branding. What's the story behind it? What's the lore? You know, um, in my mind, Veil vale is this usher of of you know experiences through visuals and music that is is a state we can reach. You know, if we want, and it's just kind of embracing like the scariness of of today. So. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, I do think Veil vale comes from a probably a similar galaxy, if not the same galaxy that Space Geisha came from. You know, they're definitely 
in cahoots up in space somewhere, but I think Bill's got a slightly different mission, so. Yeah, and I'm, I'm so glad that you found something that adequately fits all of that, as well as reflects who you are and what you want your project to be going forward. Um, yeah. And I mean, speaking about that, you, you just debuted your first release uh, in this alias, which was a mix that came out on Wakan. And what was that thought process like putting out a mix before you put out single or an EP like so many other artists do? Was that something that like you wanted to be unique to you? Yes. Putting out the mix, you know, I, I've been putting out mixes for years. I love making mixes. It's very therapeutic for myself. And um, the, you know, putting out the mix first was an idea to, you know, basically just help introduce myself to Wakan's world a little bit more. Um, we wanted the mix to, to roll out and give the Wakan family, you know, a taste of what my sound is like and, you know, kind of like I just said, what Galaxy Veil is coming from and, you know, kind of give a little tease of the songs in the mix. And then, um, you know, eventually when you drop the EP, you're, you know, your fans are a little bit more aware, um, you know, as a label head, this, this is a, it has worked really well in, in regards to, you know, giving people, it's, it's like a little warm up. It's a little, here you go, here's this and. Little taste test. Yeah, taste test, exactly. So, you know, plus I've just been incredibly, incredibly, incredibly eager to share music with everyone since um, you know, I started my rebrand in the spring and it, there is no, well, also I learned, you know, you can't put a timeline on anything. So I, you know, I had to sit still all summer and not release any music, which was the first time I had done that in almost a decade. So I was, to say I was chomping at the bit to to drop a mix, it was an understatement. And um, I also really secretly, the whole time I was writing this EP, and I just knew that it was going to be like a Halloween time release and I was really um I, I just knew that inside and I really wanted that and the timing of dropping the mix and then getting you know a fantastic date with Wakan um October 27th um for my release in you know the prime of spooky season is it doesn't get much better than that for me yeah and I think and I think a interesting question to ask too is what can people look forward to on the CP do you think it'll be the same sort of vibe as the mix do you have any like is it like a blend of genres like the mixes or is it kind of like it doesn't stay to uh, to one similar area I think I touch on a few different genres in the EP just like my mixes do in general um, I think the mix the mix is, you know, a little more geared towards, you know, I want people to get up and dance when they're hearing that mix. I, I can't really sit still when I listen to it. Like you, <laughs> it's, it's very high energy. I, I, you know, what I call that in my head is a dance floor mix. So I wanted the EP to very much be, um, you know, dance floor friendly, even though we're living in this time where that is a strange thing of the past. You know, I'm not going to let that really affect the way I make music because it's it is all actually for the dance floor um and I yeah I wanted to basically incorporate you know some hints and influences of other genres that I think a lot of Wakan's audience um you know may not may not get a lot of or um you know maybe maybe pleasantly surprised by so there's definitely you know one of the tracks is a little bit more halftime psychedelic drum and bass based and i have an awesome feature from ruku of ruku customs in nice. florida nice. on on that track yep and then the um the second track is a little bit more of a slapper so we get a little bit of both and i i felt very strongly about including you know two tracks um because i wanted to kind of showcase both you know both sides of what I was feeling right now. So it the the selection of the, re the release tracks was very intentional. Cool. And uh, it is coming out on Wakan. So is that a label that you think would fit the sound that you're going for going forward? Or do you want to start branching out to other collectives and labels as you put out more music? 
Great question. Um, well, you know, I do. So I run my own label and for many, many, many years when we would get release artists and they put out a great release with us, I would frequently encourage them to go release with other labels because you're getting access to, you know, newer markets, newer networks, newer fan bases. You're getting a new experience, a new distribution experience, which right. will inevitably help you learn more um, about your previous experiences, similarly to a relationship. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I've always thought it was a good thing to be involved with a lot of different labels. I didn't, I don't, I still don't. And I see it as like an exclusive relationship, but I do plan on, um, hitting Wakan with a, a lot of releases right now. That is hopefully the plan for moving forward. And, um, of course I'll be putting stuff out on my own label street ritual as well. And there are so many labels I would, you know, be honored and thrilled to to release with. And I think when, to be honest, when I am start making a track, I, I have that in mind a little bit because it, it inspires me and influences me um, subconsciously, you know, to to do that. But what I what I love most about my EP is I you know I just think that I it, it really is my sound and I, I I didn't go into it saying okay I need to fit my sound into this labels box or that labels box I just kind of made my sound and was hoping it would fit into those boxes <laughs> um, and you know I'm I'm just very proud of that 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 it actually is now and that you know Wakan's going to help it, it, you know, get heard by a lot more people. So it's just, it's just the same thing I've always been trying to do, man, just spread, spread more underground music, you know, far and wide. And I've had people hitting me up left and right. Um, five different artists that were featured in my Wakan mix that didn't know. And, you know, all of them had slightly different responses, but one of them was, you know, I've been in, I haven't been able to make tracks in weeks. You know, having this is the most plays I've had on my SoundCloud in a long time. Having you feature my track in that mix, it just changed my whole reality. I'm going to start, I'm, you know, I, I wrote a beat last night, like messages like that. And so, you know, like just having the opportunity to help other people that are out there, you know, struggling to have their art be heard is for me, it's one of the most rewarding things. Going forward past the EP as well, I mean, you talked about other artists and spreading that underground sound. Are there any artists that you are looking to possibly work with in the future that you think would work well with what you make? Well, um, of course, I have two collabs in the works right now. I'm very proud to say they're both with other women producers. So one is with um, Notlo and another with one of my all-time favorite DJs ever, De La Moon. And she has... You know, we signed her to Street Ritual a few years ago, and, you know, we've become very close friends. We've traveled, you know, across to Portugal together for Boom Festival. A lot of um, a lot of time spent with Dela since then. So she has now become one of my best friends. But I first and foremost, she's my favorite DJ um, and is also getting into producing music herself. So we're both kind of a little bit more at, you know, novice producer stage. So it's been really fun to collab that way. And Not Low is... Um, you know, primarily a dubstep artist. So it's really cool to have um, kind of a deeper dubstep track that we're, we're getting to kind of blend our sounds together. So it's, they're both very exciting. Um, my partner, Saltis, makes incredible music. He's honestly taught me a lot of what I know now. That's, that's actually how we met originally was an Ableton lesson many years ago. And um we have like so many tracks started together and we're just bad at finishing them and our individual projects often you know take priority when the collabs are kind of just more fun jamming things so yeah. we'll definitely get something done soon and it'll be really what really good um i got a new vocalist on the scene she goes by siren and i'm going to be getting some of her stuff into a track soon as well so exciting uh we're definitely gonna all keep our ears out for that i mean um I've been a longtime fan of the Space Geisha project, so I'm super excited to be seeing uh, this pick up so quickly and, and do so well already. Awesome, um, yeah. M me too, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, are there any you know last minute things you wanna mention before we say our farewell and go our separate ways? Um, 
yeah, obviously COVID has been, you know, incredibly hard for every, literally every tier of the music industry from sound engineers to agents to, you know, radio stations like yourselves to distribution platforms, um, photographers, mastering engineers. I mean, the list goes on. Mixing engineers, you know, stage builders, uh, grips, you know, the, it the event industry as a whole is just suffering and i've been working in events you know corporate events my entire life and you know also musical productions i've worked at venues and it's across the board all scenes everywhere we're all just really taking taking a big punch to the gut so you know i feel strongly that live music will come back and will come back in full force and I just think it's going to take a little bit more time for kind of this mid-range underground world to to bounce back. I think we'll be getting, you know, I think the bigger, big shows and big festivals will come back swinging in 2021 and it's going to be amazing. But don't forget to support, you know, your your locals, your friends, your photographers, everybody that, you know, has a hand in the music scene as things start to roll roll back in. Um, pe vendors at parties, you know, whatever it is, just try to be supportive across the board because we all need each other to rebuild our industry, quite literally. So, you know, every like, every play, every share, every purchase, every comment, it all actually really does matter. Um, and it really does help us. And I think even artists with, you know, 100K followers, someone as big as Rez or something like even even them they're they're hurting right now and they're appreciating every like every follow every comment just try to support artists across the board and um, do what you can right now and you know when shows start coming back be safe the safer we are now you know hopefully the the sooner we can get get together soon the sooner we can you know I'll be together and I do feel like by 2022 um, I feel like 2021 will be a interesting year back and we'll be definitely like at events and stuff but i think hopefully my my feelings are by 2022 we'll be full swing again